Hello. Welcome to ITV Asia. I'm Sharon Landon and your program host for Executive Women Focus on China. With me today is Susan Hekala. She's the general manager of Weyerhaeuser Real Estate Consulting Company in Shanghai. Uh, Susan has a bachelor's in urban design from the Stanford University, and she also has two masters in urban planning and business administration from the University of Washington. Susan is currently uh, chairing the real estate company, uh, real estate committee of American uh, Chamber of Commerce in Shanghai. Susan, welcome and thank, thank you. you very much for being here today. Nice to see you and thanks for inviting me. Okay, um, perhaps we can just start off a little bit by you telling me um, uh, what has led you up to being here in Shanghai today. Oh, okay, be happy to. Um, well, my background with Weyerhaeuser, uh, you know, Weyerhaeuser is based in uh, Seattle, Washington area, mm -hmm. and I've been with Weyerhaeuser now about uh, 17 years. And uh, you know, the the first uh, mostly 15 of that was involved in real estate development, mm -hmm. um, starting out in uh, commercial real estate, developing business parks, commercial buildings, industrial buildings, and then moving into master plan communities, and. Uh, Actually, you know, along, all along the way, I've had a passion for international travel, and uh, and that has been a little bit unusual with some of my colleagues that they've always known my passion for traveling. Um, but uh, you know, Weyerhaeuser and the real estate companies are focused primarily, you know, in that Puget Sound area. So um, you know, I never really anticipated that I might have an opportunity to have a job abroad, although you know that had always been a, a goal. Uh, but when this particular opportunity emerged to come to China um, for this, um, you know, sort of a special business initiative, you know, it was one that I immediately um, volunteered to be part of, and so that uh, kind of launched me here. Okay, so actually, this is your first overseas assignment. It is then. my first overseas assignment. Well, how's it been so far? Is uh, any uh, Super challenges that you've yeah. been dealing with, or is it um, well, sense? actually, you know, I've been here now almost two years, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, actually, it's it's been rather smooth in terms of adjusting to uh, living in a, in a new environment. I'm really enjoying it as much as I, you know, as I thought and hoped mm -hmm. I would. So, Great. well, Shanghai is uh, really a dynamic city, and. Um, Time, the two years, I'm sure it's passed really quickly. Yeah, um. it's, sometimes <laughs> I think it's two years. I'm going, oh my gosh, has it been two years? You're right. It is incredibly dynamic, and uh, time, you know, time goes at lightning speed. Right. Well, um, I, I know most of us, well, myself included, uh, but uh, probably know a little bit more about the Weyerhaeuser um, pulp paper and, and con uh, con carton. Um, division, board. container yeah. board di yeah. division, because I actually from uh, from Hawaii, there's there's one right on the way to Honolulu, um, and um, I'm not too familiar with the the the, the real estate division. Now, what, what Weyerhaeuser has been in China for for, for how long now? Um, yeah, well, let me put a little bit of context to all of that. Weyerhaeuser has actually been in China for uh, getting close to 30 years. Okay. So. Um, we made our first sale into China in uh, about 1973, shortly after you know, some of the initial opening. And that has primarily been involved in the sale of products um, to China, just as you mentioned, container board, recycle products, right. paper, um, lumber, engineered wood products. You know, that has been, you know, been our primary focus. Um, but you know, probably about four years ago, um, uh, because of the growth and emergence of China as such a major economy, uh, the company wanted to look at other opportunities to grow and expand the reach of our business in mm -hmm. China. And there was a, a, um, an investigation or an, an initiative launched um, to look at what those opportunities um, you know, might be. And it was determined that you know, the, there were opportunities for growth in our you know, forestry side of the business, um, the engineered wood products that uh, are used in the building of you know, residential construction, um, and then also some of the wood that's used in interior, in you know, interior decoration, cabinetry, doors, um, trims, and that kind of thing. Um, and so, what uh, the company did was look at ways that we could potentially um, uh, you know, grow into those areas. Mm -hmm. And looking a little bit more. Uh, 
uh, in depth at how we would get um, you know, wood products used in the uh, residential sector is since that isn't a common building material that one mm -hmm. you know one sees in China, um, it was yes. <laughs> it was uh, thought that you know not only could we just kind of try to push our way into China by you know making cold calls on developers and trying to sell them wood that we needed to show them how it might be done, mm -hmm. and so that's what led to having a real estate presence here in China was as a means to build some initial projects that could show. Um, how wood can be used in an effective, high-quality um, manner in residential development, and so that's what led us to, you know, establish a you know a development presence here. Okay. You know, maybe going back just one second, you mentioned that you were, um, you know, a little less familiar about warehousers' role in real estate, mm -hmm. um, just in general in the U.S. Um, actually, warehouser has been in the real estate, you know, arena. You know, for about 35 years, primarily single-family home building, mm -hmm. um, and uh, but you know, in the course of doing our development, we we operate in a number of limited markets. But each of our companies operate, you know, with specific regional brands, and so they don't operate with a, a warehouser name. So, for example, if people are familiar with uh, Southern California, we build as Pardee Home in Southern California. Okay. In the Pacific Northwest, where I come home, come from, you know, we build as quadrant homes. So, so um, you know, when you amalgamate all of our companies, we have five building companies across the U.S. We're you know the 15th largest home builder in volume in the U.S. But mm. uh, it's not as much of a you know a familiar name because right. we build build with regional brands. Okay, this is the thing about multinational companies. I find that that there's so much different. Um, products and, and branding that they have under their um, umbrella that it is quite uh, uh, interesting to learn, oh, this belongs to such and such That's company right. organization. Yeah, right. Okay, so um, then now you guys are here in China with the real estate portion and, and, and it's trying to, and as you mentioned before, right, uh, every, as many people know, con it's a lot of concrete being used in, in, in China. So is it been you know, using wood products for homes and and things like you mentioned, is it um, been a, a challenge? I mean, why would they all of a sudden believe or, or say, okay, yeah, we want to have this wood being used to build our homes rather than what we've always done, which is uh, concrete, which is is quite um, cost effective too, I believe. It's cost effective in to, in today's market, mm -hmm. but um, you know, I would say it's. Um, it is a challenge, and it continues to be a challenge. Mm -hmm. um, the uh, you know there you know there are a variety of you know of reasons you know for that, and some you know some have been you know are continuing to be you know more difficult to you know to overcome you know over time, just largely because of some of the other regulations that have been emerging mm -hmm. since um, you know since that we have arrived here. But um, so talking about the product specifically, I mean we. Believe that you know wood frame homes are um, can be built actually um, you know as cost effectively if not more so you know over time they you know can be more energy efficient uh, they're more you know uh, a, a more environmentally sound building process mm -hmm. than using concrete or other sort of masonry type um, materials so that in fact it is a um, you know you know it is uh, you know very consistent with uh, some of the uh, green building goals, you know, that um, that are uh, sort of the policies of China today and, you know, mm -hmm. globally, you know, right. much, much greater concern about that. Um, there's still, um, you know, are, you know, fewer, you know, wood products available in China, so that's why, you know, the costs are, you know, probably perceived to be higher, but, you know, as that market matures, we think that, you know, that they can definitely be cost competitive, and some of the analysis we've done have shown that. But there still is the the market paradigm to overcome people's perception exactly. um, that it is, you know, that it is, you know, equally durable, and all of those um, kinds of things that people come to expect out of their concrete home. But you know, um, you know, homes in the U.S. are have been built with wood for 
you know, over a hundred years, and the homes built a hundred years ago are still standing. So right. it's, a, it's all part something of that right. education. You know, mm -hmm. Well, I'm assuming that uh, China has vast resources of, of timberland that that um, the warehouser would be tapping in. Or I know in the in the U.S. and in other countries, um, your organization has purchased or, or, or bought certain timberlands in, in, in regards to uh, integrating with their own their business. Is that going to be the, something that you are trying to do here in China as well? Yeah, actually, that's a, that's a you know, really good question. I mean, you know, Weyerhaeuser is, you know, is one of the global leaders in, um, you know, in terms of its ownership of uh, you know, forest lands you know, around the world. Um, you know, North America is, is obviously a major um, area where we own timberland, now South America, and, uh, and we are just beginning to, you know, establish some forestry operations here in China. We now have a forestry joint venture in Fujian province, mm -hmm. you know, that is kind of just, a, you know, at this moment it's really a, a toehold. Um, where it's a, it's a relatively small operation, but we are working in a joint venture to grow eucalyptus, you know, in oh. Fujian province, and hope to hope to grow that operation. Um, unfortunately, China is not um, rich in forest resources today, and so that is a problem that China does have. They probably import about 50% of the wood products that are used here today, and so you know that. You know, in fact, that is another issue that we contend with because you know there is a shortage of those products. But hmm. um, but complementing what we're trying to do on the building side is our effort in the in the forestry side to actually um, begin to grow you know the the wood resources here. And uh, and there are others who are doing that as well. But uh, I think China is concerned about that, and they do want to increase you know their you know their forestry um, production. Well, that's interesting. It seems that when I go out of Shanghai and into the countryside, there seems to be, or in the, more in the mountains, that there's quite a lot of trees. Is it a certain type of tree then that's that's needed really, and they would have China would have to. Um, I mean, if they're not going to be importing some, they would have to grow it from the beginning or, and cultivate it for. Yeah, I mean, China does have the opportunity to import. I mean, certainly, you know, there are. Um, you know, there are you know vast forests to the north of China in, uh, right. in Russia, um, but you know there are certain species that are used for different product types, whether it's lumber, whether it's paper, whether it's pulp, mm -hmm. and so. And now you're getting into an arena that's not my <laughs> expertise, so I'll have to talk to some of the, my other experts within the company. But but it you know it's not every tree can be used for every right, every purpose, definitely. and so you know you do have to find um, specialized locations to you know to grow um, basically grow fiber for the per the use that you have in mind. And so um, you know one of the advantages about Fujian um, mm -hmm. province, just as say in where we are um, in South America, is that you can grow eucalyptus to a size where you can harvest it and use it in, in seven to ten years, mm. versus North oh. America, where now again not the same, you know, not the same species or same purpose, but right. you know it may take thirty years, and so you are, you know, so you know some of the things that we're doing is looking to areas where we can. Um, produce a product more mm -hmm. quickly. I mean, I'm, I mean, uh, when you think about, um, you know, now we're also used to um, IT technology and the generation of software changes in a few months. I mean, you know, you know, growing a tree is a whole much longer process, and so we're still trying to speed up that process. But we can never, we'll never get to uh, six months and we'll have a tree. You know, but well, I guess that's on line with everything else in China. It's just a lot, a lot of fast moving. Um, um, well, so for real estate, you the real estate division has come into China quite recently. I mean, I don't. Yeah, ba basically, you know, I came to establish. Okay, when this, you came two so years ago. Two years ago, so you know, mm -hmm. we were, uh, and, and in essence, we're, um, you know, we're an R and D. Kind of effort, as I mentioned, relative to trying to help grow, mm -hmm. um, grow the market for the use of um, 
you know, wood products in, in building homes. Right. So you're actually quite different than from the other real estate organizations or companies that are established here, for example, uh, Jones Lang LaSalle or, or, or um, um, Cal Caldwell Banker. <laughs> Yeah, well, in, in the, or another developer. I mean, or you know, the, you know, Jones Lang LaSalle is you know involved more in the um, uh, the service side, but other you know other developers here who are either developing you know commercial buildings or you know say staying in the residential you know sector, developing uh, you know residential product, whether it's high rise, you know mid rise or um, villa and townhome. Mm -hmm. um, kind of product here, uh, you know, we are you know quite distinctly, distinctively different in the sense that you know we have a sort of a, another business purpose, which is to develop business for another part of our company. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, if we were if we were here, you know, exclusively as a real estate developer, um, we would be uh, more likely to. Uh, be more uh, flexible with the changes in the market, you know, just as a Chinese company, um, you know, would be as some of the, you know, the regulations change and make, you know, developing low-rise residential uh, more difficult, encouraging smaller, um, higher density um, residential projects, we would shift with that market. Mm -hmm. um, but our purpose is really to focus on that low density, and so we cannot, you know, we're not as opportunistic you know, <laughs> in that regard. So we have to, uh, in a sense, stick to our knitting and, right. uh, and, and focus on continuing to look for those opportunities where we can demonstrate um, the benefits of, you know, of wood, wood frame construction. So, so it poses you know, some, you know, some much greater challenges for us. We're, I mean, I think uh, you know, what I see about China business you know, and successful entrepreneurs is, again, that flexibility to go where the customer, go where the market is. And to a certain extent, we, we're saying, no, this is what we're here to do. And so we're going to, con you know, try to continue to find different ways to accomplish that. Yes, I think being an, a global organization, I, that's really necessary um, in today's market. And so being the new kid on the block as, as, the, as you are with the real estate division is not necessarily detrimental in, in in your um, the strategy that your your company has for for China, um, so we mentioned um, the the market, and you also mentioned some of the regulations that the uh, China has. Now, what are a couple of them that are really you wish were different or could change um, in order to um, allow your business to uh, Progress. In, in well, I can I can give you a couple of examples, but I can, I'll also say, um, you know, you know why I understand they're there. But you know, I suppose one really obvious one is the government has banned um, the sale of, of land for for villa housing. Mm -hmm. um, so local governments, which are the source of you know basically selling land or selling the long term lease to the land, no longer. Can can sell for low density, so that you know right away you know, severely restricts, yeah. if not almost eliminates, the ability for <laughs> us to do business. So you know, so that's pretty fundamental. That's all um, all of China, or just around. That's all of China, right? Yeah, and uh, and then beyond that, I mean, we can do low rise, say townhomes, three story, but there's you know there's some restrictions on that. There are other restrictions that make it more difficult for you know foreign invested enterprises. You know, like ourselves, to to come in and do business, you know, here in the real estate arena. You know, I think a lot of that is is motivated by you know some very important pressures China faces. You know, I mean the you know the rapid urbanization. Um, you know, the fact that you know the there's a, a great disparity between the haves and the have-nots, mm -hmm. and so. You know, and there's been a lot of speculation in the in the real estate market. A lot of it focused on residential. So you know, they're trying to address those very real, very significant problems. And you know, the way to do that is with some very, you know, broad brush <laughs> regulations. But at the same time, you know, we're clearly, you know, we're a little niche. 
player and it would be nice if we didn't have to deal with that but again we understand what the you know what the rationale is for it and you know in many ways you know i applaud the government for trying to deal with that but you know i wish it didn't have such a restrictive effect on our business you know so well i am do you see it getting better then i mean as as china continues and progresses and the government gets a better understanding of of how to uh, adjust certain things or put certain uh, stoppers on things while taking others out in the future i mean i th i think i mean i would imagine over time mm -hmm. that there will be a greater you know balance in the marketplace i mean clearly there is a demand for the kind of you know residential product that you know we want to develop and other developers do but they do it in concrete so and they're you know in those kind of homes sell very quickly so it's obviously it's obviously something that's um, you know there's a demand out there there's customers out there who you know have the resources have the desire um, but you know but again there's you know there are small you know smaller segment of the overall market but i think as the as the as time goes on mm -hmm. some of the you know the these other issues begin to get addressed or they or there's there's paths to that i would mm -hmm. imagine there's going to be a little bit more balance but you know i don't necessarily think that's going to be in the next <laughs> next year or you know even 18 months or a couple of years i think that's right. it's going to be a process yeah. you know, but i think that that will happen there's a role in place for you know different product types um, you know different kind of uses uh, different customers you know throughout the market but but it's going to take some time you know, it's going to take some time these are trying to face some big challenges exactly they have a lot <laughs> a lot of work to do um, well, one other thing uh, I just wanted to ask you before we, we go. Um, you've got a lot of ex extensive experience in urban planning and urban design. Have you gone down to the uh, I mean, uh, the People's Square over there, the urban planning center that the government has? Oh, yeah, of course. Okay. Yeah, so. Well, what do you think about their, um, I mean, what they have planned for Shanghai, and do you feel that it's something that's, sustainable with the current uh, China situation in regards to where the government wants to go well I you know the I mean one of the things that most impresses me about you know the the urban planning museum of course is the the model you know the yes. Shanghai model which uh, you know the scale of that is just you know Amazing. so enormous but um, when you start to kind of understand what the government not only in Shanghai but other parts of China are trying to um, develop you know, other urban centers mm -hmm. you know not necessarily just grow Shanghai bigger grow Beijing bigger um, you know or Guangzhou bigger Shenzhen other you know other existing centers but try to create some more kind of satellite areas that have you know the industry the residential mm -hmm. you know the um, the commercial areas that become you know, other magnets for growth you know, in their own right. You know, frankly, I, it's a, you know, it's a tough challenge, but I, I think there's a lot of merit to that because, I mean, I think we all, you know, experience, you know, living, you know, in Shanghai the way we do that it's it's tougher and tougher to get around, <laughs> um, you know, every day. Um, it's you know, and and you know, the population is you know, it's huge. There's not more space to put more people yet. More and more people, more and more cars, and so yeah. I think having. Uh, again, having some other centers to try to then sort of siphon some of that growth off into other areas, I think I think is a is probably you know a worthy objective. You know, and there probably are few places in the world today that can do that successfully as China by having you know the ability to you know say it and do it you know fairly you know fairly um, readily, but. Um, but it's it's still it's still going to be a you know a big challenge you know again there I think moving from you know what is a country that is you know I think maybe 40 plus percent urbanized today mm -hmm. to one that's going to 60 percent urbanized over you know in the next 10 years is you know is is pretty dramatic and yeah. so that's several hundred million people <laughs> I mean that's basically Where the population of the U S moving. Um, you know, entirely into cities in China. I mean, that's pretty staggering when you think about it. Right, amazing. So there you have it.
we've got the China government doing a great job. <laughs> and we want to thank you for watching ITV Asia.